Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today I want to have a look at stamping using rubber, stamps, silicon stamps, ink and tissue paper. So while I had a few days to myself over the weekend, I had um, some packaging paper which was this and you tend to get this if uh, you go to a gift shop and they maybe wrap something up which is how I got this also you can get paper if you've got new shoes all scrunched up it's a perfect surface to stamp on to create your own very nice very thin tissue paper stamped collage so without further ado I'd like to show you how I've created this using my rubber stamps uh, some of Tim Holtz some you'll probably recognize of seeing the bugs and some butterflies and um, I'll probably bring in some different stamps as well just to keep it interesting for me because I've already done this one but I'll show you the technique of how I built this up to look so busy yet really interesting uh, to be able to create a tearing sheet as well as decorative wrapping for presents for people or if you're sending happy mail perfect to wrap up uh, your journal ephemera or anything you might be sending to friends so here you can see a section that's been ripped away and that was so I could uh, decorate this envelope with the insect there and I did a butterfly inside and it's all very lightweight and you just collage it on with a bit of glue We've got the ladybird there with a the number that was a washi tape stamp but do see it's um, quite a nice way to alter envelopes and um, you know other journaling cards as well it could be a very quick way of uh, just tearing some off so I'd like to do that today so that we can use this in future projects and you need to cover your table with a drop sheet um, I'm using you know this covered a magazine and we get this now instead of the plastic wrapping magazines we have paper so I'm just recycling what's already sent to me I'm going to use this tissue paper that I got from the gift shop I'm just going to cut a bit off I'm not going to use a massive sheet because we'll be here forever doing it I just want to give you a sample uh, the other thing I'm having is a sheet of coffee dyed paper I've got a load of silicon stamps which I have collected I, I don't know why I have <laughs> I know exactly why I have so many because I'm obsessed but um, it's quite astounding when you start to see a collection I'll just show you how I store them as well because I think this is quite interesting for you um, I have a little I have a little sort of step up system on my table here and um, I then have a plastic box nothing fancy I think it came from the bathroom section there you go it's just a tidy and the silicon stamps just fit in there so I'm able to just have them stood up at any given moment I can then grab stamps so I'm just going to pull out a few here okay I've got some stamps here I've also got this nice rubber one and I haven't used it before so I think we'll use that today and then if that wasn't enough um, for Christmases and birthdays I always ask for one of Tim Holtz collection stamps so this one we've seen before I want to use this script stamp here I may steer away from the bugs because I've used those quite a few times I'm just going to pull from things that I sort of like I've got these wonderful um, botanical flowers and then I've got these background this is fragments so you just need to look these are a lot a lot of them are quite old now illustrated garden that one's quite new fragments faded type um, entomology that one's a little bit tricky to get hold of now because it's quite old and this one is sea life I'm not sure I'll use that I don't know I will see how I feel when I get everything out 
and there's no reason for using an archive link. Um, I don't need the permanency of it. It's just I don't have a bigger ink block uh, like this. I don't have this in black, which is a bit of an oversight, really, because I use that. Um, so that's one to get. So you've got your black ink all to the ready. You've got your tissue paper, you've got a spare bit of paper. This is a tea dyed paper. It's I'm now going to stamp onto this and this. So I'm just inking. Well, these are nice and... So I can go this way, I can go this way. And we just pop it on randomly. It doesn't matter if it's straight, but I suppose it sort of looks quite good if it is. Come off the page a bit. Right, that's good. Let's have this one. This is old, like old um, ancient text. I think that's the right way up. So. Hmm. So that's quite dark. And I'm going to put some over here so that cleans off the ink from that one. And the other thing is you do a fir the first image over here. like that so that's quite dark and now I can put it here and get the secondary image which would be a lot paler so I get a look like that just a suggestion of it if you get an air bubble under your silicon stamp you will not get the impression so it's actually quite good to roll when you've got a big stamp like this roll it on like that and then you limit the air bubbles good 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 put something up there let's use this one this is a wood effect one i buy these from amazon or ebay or AliExpress. Yeah, I've done the thing where I've got to roll it on. So. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that down as a first impression over here. That's very bold, so I don't want that. I'm going to hopefully get a paler one over here. and then a bit over here if there's any left okay I'm going to use this one uh, stamp off first and then get a secondary image there Stamp off first, don't press too hard, just lightly because you still want to be able to get a, um, an impression. Oh, see, that came out quite dark, but pale enough. I'm not wanting a true impression really, I'm just wanting a hint, so I'm not using a block. Just lightly doing it so I get an impression there. Maybe a bit firmer here. It perfect, perfect, and then we'll have maybe one upside down. Great. So you're covering the sheet, really. Do 
Do I want seaside things? Do I want a giant lobster? <laughs> what else have I got? Oh, let's just carry on with backgrounds. Okay, so frag fragments. Okay. That's nice. Just push that down. And maybe on it, maybe on its side. Over here. Like that. Now I'm looking at this. I'm quite intrigued by having this seahorse. Oh, look at him. Okay. So now we can start putting darker images on to be more focal. And just be a bit more focused on the pressure, make sure you've got everything. There. That's lovely. Great. Yum. Um, what next? Oh, now, then, I think I need something there, don't I? A bit more background. Yep, that would fit in there. I'll have to go with that. That wasn't straight. Doesn't matter, though. And then maybe a bit up the top there. So you can control the depth of colour by the amount you press, how hard you press, and um, press hard, you get a much deeper impression. Um, a light press will give you that ghost effect. Well, that was a secondary image anyway, so it was going to be pale. So there you can see the darkness of the seahorse. I love that, where it's all pale in the background there. And then you, when you stamp over it, you've already got a bit of a background going on. So that might look nice there. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way when you've got a stamp you can't see. It's all right with the silicon ones because you can see the ink going on, but with that you can't. Also don't know exactly where the stamp is about to stamp because I can't see. Whoops, it. Yeah, see, so it overlapped. Right, I don't like that one as much, but I'm putting it here as a secondary stamp in the hope that it won't come out too dark. No, that's fine. Okay, right, I can live without not having that one anymore. Silicone stamping blocks. There's some nice little butterflies on here there as well. So little things like that just fill in the gaps. So let's see what this one looks like. Okay. Hmm. I could have some postage lines. Let's try that. Well, that's quite nice with the seahorse, isn't it, to have the wavy lines. This one looks quite good. This is a bit of coral from that same seahorse pack with all the fish and things on it so we'll have a bit of coral down there oh that's a good one I 
do we want that massive octopus? I think I love you know it's great, but it's also going to be really. Um, so this is kind. Of, it's going to be too big. This is a nice idea because you can see exactly what it's going to look like. You just sort of place them and see whether you like a lobster in your design or a fish. All rather bizarre. But part of the fun. Part of the fun. It works really well. I love that. Well, let's have another one. Where's he gonna go? Be here. Oh, fantastic. He didn't get his tail. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And the more you sit here, if you wanted to be precise, obviously the nicer your your sheet of paper is going to turn out. Um, where do we want this lobster here? Oh no, here. Secondary image. Let's see if we get one. Yep. Just about. Crabs good. I don't really use these. I never know what to uh, use these with. So this is quite nice. And then it would work as a tearing sheet because you can, you can add the elements to different projects. Depending on what the mood is of that project. If you needed a nautical theme and, and the very thing is a cheeky little lobster or a naughty crab, you now have one. <laughs> I think, you know, you can carry on there, but that's essentially what I'm trying to show you. And um, you just keep building up and stamping off on the other sheet of paper. This is then going to be used. You can use that as a sheet. Uh, you can make an envelope out of that piece of paper. That could be really fun and then still collage over the top of it because that becomes your background. If they lose their stick, these silicone stamps, you can wash them with a dish soap. Okay, it's not going to work, so we'll just do it by hand. And I quite like this number. So we just have this dotted around the place. So I've got these butterflies here. That sticks there, that's nice. Ah, that's what we want. So we can have this butterfly zooming in. Might have him in the centre of those. Oh, incredibly dark clouds just come over the top and taken away every scrap of daylight. So we're obviously in for a massive load of rain. And... Uh, I'm just quietly going to get on with my stamping and not worry about that. So I'm using a little scripty floral stamp here just to add a darker element there, here and there. And something as small as that then just nips into those little areas where you haven't got anything. I don't think this one got much in the way of that's perfect. Okay guys well I think you've got um, the idea of what I'm doing here. I'll show you a picture of the final things at the end and then you can see how I finish that off but I will probably just add a few last minute little touches um, of smaller stamps. You can have a go at that 
if you've got stamps, any stamps really, the more you sort of get into junk journaling, you do pick up these stamps and I found quite a few stamps on my travels um, when I've gone to uh, charity shops, junk sales, garage sales, there's often a little box with miscellaneous craft bits in there and I always seem to find something. So it's really, really worthwhile keeping your eyes peeled for this sort of thing. And then you can build up your collection at a really inexpensive you know, way or cost to you. And that's, that's that idea, so that was fun. Let's do that. Remember, this is an oil base, and once it's on your clothes, it really is rather difficult to get off. When you've mastered the paper and the tissue paper, you might be interested in transcending over to fabric. Using archival ink, that can't be moved once it's on fabric. Uh, which is why you do need to be very careful when you're inking because you can get it on your clothes. I have managed to do that. Uh, this was a very lightweight cotton, like a pillowcase, something uh, just a linen. And um, it's got a nice softness to it, so it hasn't bled through to the back. It's done in exactly the same way, using exactly similar stamps and just putting down a delicate background first and then building up your focal point images on top. And then that can be made into one of our little mini booklets or journals. And here's one I've made using the fabric, but nothing to stop me. I just need to iron this. So this will be my next Thing I'll probably do because I had fun making that with the little bugs. There's enough there for you to just turn in, make a little booklet. So I will show you how to do the little booklet where you don't need a massive spine and to just add some pages in that way. Alright, so that will be coming up using this fabric in exactly the same technique as the tissue, but I did sit down focus on it and I did make sure my elements were straight which I perhaps didn't do today on here as much. Uh, that's the secondary stamping off bit. Gosh I'm sorry if you can hear the rain on the window. And then here's where we're at with that. I've ripped the edge already but you know I could chop that off. And then if you've got something, once you've got something to send to somebody, a friend or a... So it has bled through slightly on the other side because that's quite a strong ink. And just to show you, it has picked up some of it on this drop sheet. So you definitely need to protect your table surface. You can now use this as a packaging. And uh, also decoupage something using this there we go and then a little bit of string or some sari ribbon and you've made a fabulous inexpensive gift wrap or something to cover a page or embellish and I hope you found value here I hope you found some inspiration please like and subscribe if you thought this was worth your time and effort um, my time and effort as well um, your comments really encourage me to make more videos and lots of things coming up including making a little book clip we've got some um, dyeing techniques coming your way with paper paper dyeing with um, using botanical things and uh, the coffee pot challenge is coming now weekly, so that's me trying to create something from three things that I pick out of my coffee tin. OK, guys, well, I won't take any more of your time, but thank you so much for watching. And above all else, please just slow down and make crafting time for you.
Bye-bye now.